and welcome back. Tenshi is a tech-enabled startup with a mission to advance diversity and leadership development through executive coaching. Our next guest knows firsthand the obstacles many women and underrepresented minorities face and encounter as they attempt to climb the corporate ladder. She recently announced the publication of her new book, Decoding Sponsorship, The Secret Strategy to Accelerating Your Career and Launch into Leadership. Joining me now is the CEO of Tenshi, Maggie Chan-Jones. And uh, Maggie, good to have you. Darren, thanks so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to have you, and it's a pleasure to really uh, have an opportunity to have this conversation with you. And, um, you know, I introduced our viewers a little bit of, to what Tenshi is about, but you're the CEO. So take us a little bit more in depth as to what Tenshi is all about. Yeah, you know, after 20 years in tech, I really felt like I wanted to do something to pay it forward in a way to help other leaders behind me to accelerate their career growth. And for me, you know, growing up in tech, I felt like I didn't really see a lot of people who looked like me. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was helping leaders to grow. And, you know, personally, I had an executive coach for 10 years before I started Tenshi and I was like, wow, I wish more people, especially women and underrepresented minorities would get a coach earlier in their career. That's how I started my company. It's really about advancing diversity in the workplace and one leader at a time. Well, when you were talking about 20 years in the executive field, here you are working in your 20 years, you don't see anybody that actually looks like you or is in, or underrepresented, uh, I should say underrepresented uh, communities of color in technology. What was that like for you trying to be able to navigate the workspace knowing that um, you in essence were a minority? Yeah, I would say this is exactly why I wrote my book, Decoding Sponsorship. Because personally, I felt like along the way in my career, it was because of other people in front of me who pulled me forward. They were my sponsors. They were the people who advocated for me. They were the people who opened doors for, uh, of new opportunities for me. And in fact, you know, they were the ones that, you know, behind closed doors, my name was raised as a way to, you know, for whether it is promotion, stretch projects, or opportunities to grow. So I really felt like, you know, because of my sponsors, because of my coach, because of the work that I have done, that's what got me to where I, where I am today. So I really feel like, you know, for me growing in tech, there is absolutely a way to get there in growing in your leadership, but you have to find ways to get the support system that you need. So you do provide a support system and uh, talk to us about some of the services that you provide for those uh, who are seeking assistance. Yeah, so at Tenshi, what we do is executive coaching, leadership coaching. So we really match um, our coaches, our certified coaches based on you know, the needs of the individual. And in on top of that, one of the things that I'm super proud of is our sponsorship program. Our sponsorship program is, is doing exactly what I just talked about, is helping organizations to, do, um, to match their, their rising talent with the leaders who are already in the position of power so that they can intentionally help the next generation leaders, especially for women and underrepresented minority leaders to grow. And our sponsorship program actually won an innovation award in the um, in the diversity journal because of the new way of doing things that really changed the game in terms of how we see the impact of women and underrepresented minority leaders to grow within the organization. And when we talk about diversity, it's really important. I think, I think that's the word of the day uh, and the word of society right now that if we're ever gonna be better, uh, we've got to become more diverse. And when you look at America, I mean, it's a, it's a really a multi-diverse, I mean, it's one of the most diverse countries we have in the world, but yet and still when we get to the workplace, we find uh, that it's not so the case. So what are some of the strategies that we can employ to better diversify our areas of uh, workplace? That is actually a very good question, Darren. And to your point, I think it really come, you know, it has to come from multiple areas. You know, obviously we ourselves are doing the best that we can, 
you know, you work hard, you, you know, you hoping that you can continue to work hard and grow. At the same time, that alone is not enough. You need organizations who really step up in, you know, in their focus on diversity and inclusion, how they manage their own, you know, policies, how they, you know, cultivate their culture to be diverse and to be inclusive. And on top of, on top of that is also, you know, from the government public sector perspective, what are some of the policies that enable you know, um, everyone to have an equal opportunity as well? And those are the three areas that I think are absolutely critical for the success of creating equality. So here you go, you write the book and uh, you write the book listening, looking to really bridge that gap. Uh, and you talked about your career and really how that was a motivating factor for the book and the executive coaching. Uh, for somebody who wants to know a little bit more about the book, share with us. Yeah, so, you know, this is years in the making. And one of the key things that, um, why I wrote my book, Decoding Sponsorship, right here that I got a copy was, um, was because I really felt like, you know, so many people came up to me and asked, Maggie, how do you get there? How do you get to the C-suite? To your point, Darren, earlier, you mentioned that, you know, I mean, even though we are, if we have a very diverse population in the U.S., but yet, only 20, only 20% 20 of the C-suite are women and only 4% are women of color. Why is that? So what do we need to do to change that? So in my book, Decoding Sponsorship, I talk about my own career journey, how I got to the C-suite. And also I talk to many leaders of different stages in their career, some of the challenges, the triumphs that they have. And, um, you know, I, I really lay it out on how I actually went about thinking about getting to my career North Star, how I go about, you know, learning the lessons along the way at different level of my career from the very get go, you know, trying to find my first job out of college all the way to, you know, becoming a C-suite executive, becoming a board director and now founding my own company. So I hope this, you know, this book will, um, you know, spark some ideas for readers who, you know, who are thinking about how they grow their own career journey as well. And so when you talk about executive leadership, that's a real, uh, you know, it's a minority place. You know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of people in executive leadership. Uh, and when you look particularly in communities of color and women, we know that that's not always uh, the case. But can you share with us a little bit about some of the challenges you actually face by being at that executive level and really not seeing the diversity that you, uh, that you really were hoping for? Absolutely. I, I think one key thing that is not only about me, but, you know, for many minority leaders is when you are the only woman or when you are the only minority in a room, sometimes you may feel like your voice is not heard. And so how do you go about finding your voice at the table, right? And, you know, how do you go about cultivating those relationships across the C-suite, across the boardroom? Those are the key things that are important. And for many that are growing their career, and one of the stories that I share in my book as well is talking about one of the one of the very talented leader who happened to be a Black American woman um, that I had the privilege to sponsor when I was at SAP. And you know, she talked about some of her own struggles as well on you know being you know getting her voice heard and getting you know. How do you become, how, how are you going to be ambitious for your goals, but not being seen too ambitious? And, you know, you have that double bind for women, and especially for women of color and myself included, that if you're being too ambitious, you're being coined as being too aggressive. But you're not, if you're not ambitious enough, you would never get to your goals. So how do you walk that fine line and trying to get to where you get to? So which is why, you know, going back to sponsorship, I think, you know, getting the leaders who are in the position of power, who are looking for the next generation of talents who can continue to take on bigger responsibilities for the company. And, you know, cultivating those type of partnership is going to be key in making a difference. So you offer a variety of different services over Tenshi. And I wanted to let our viewers know that I know that one of the things that you also do is you also have virtual workshops that are available. 
Absolutely. And that is part of our sponsorship program as well, Darren, is our workshops specifically are helping, helping, our, helping our members to really focus on identifying their goals for their career. And I'll tell you a quick story too, that you know, it wasn't until I was halfway through my corporate career that a VP came to me and my VP of marketing, and I was at Microsoft at the time, and he said, you know, Maggie, where do you want to be when you grow up? And I just kind of like stopped and I it was like, wow, no one ever asked me that question and I never thought about it. And of course, you know, being um, working at Microsoft at that time, I went home and created a PowerPoint slide. And the next day I went back to my VP and said, you know, I wanted to be the head of marketing of a company one day. I don't know when, I don't know how big, um, but that's what I wanted to do because I was passionate about marketing. And it was from that point forward that every single decision that I made in my career was very intentional about becoming the head of marketing or CMO um, you know, from that perspective. So knowing what you want to do, and, and that's part of what we do in our workshops as well, is helping our members to really create their own career North Star so that they know where they want to be, um, you know, when they grow up and what are the steps to get there. Yeah. And in your own kind of way, you're kind of like paying it forward, right? Because uh, to a certain extent, you are you've had these experiences, you've had these challenges, but yet still you're taking your experience and your challenges as well as your success. And uh, we gotta mention a huge amount of success and you're actually helping people to be able to develop it at the next level. What's that mean for you? That means the world to me. And you know, every day when I get to talk to some of our members, talk to some of our sponsors and hearing their own, their own transformational story, and I mean, that is exactly what motivate me and inspire me con to continue to do what I do. And honestly, that is also the motivation behind the book Decoding Sponsorship as well, because, because of all these stories that I have heard that I've personally experienced, um, I really want to share it with the world so that more people can, you know, look at others example and you know figure it out their own path figure it out what are the lessons that they learn along the way and you know i i think this is why i do what i do give me an example about this uh you know many people have this trouble with transition when it's time to go right you've been in a place and it seems like you've hit the ceiling and you really are unsure uh, when do you think really for a person uh it's time to really make that move I think a good litmus test is how often do you wake up in the morning and say, gosh, you know, I can't believe I have to, I have to go to work again, or I have to do this again, right? So, you know, I, I think one of the key things I look at is, you know, I want to wake up every morning and get excited to do what I do every day. But there will be time that you feel like, gosh, you know, this is no longer giving me the excitement and the inspiration to do what I do. So that is a good time to really start thinking, okay, what is next for me? And going back to one of the things that I talked about in the book is knowing yourself is one of the first things that you wanna know. No matter what career stage you're in is you continue to learn something new about yourself. So knowing what are the things that you're good at, knowing what are the things that you are excited to do, and trying to find the next thing that gives you that, like not only about, you know, what you're good at, but also what you enjoy doing. And hopefully it will also minimize some of the things that you're not too excited about doing. But, you know, at the same time, I would caution people that, you know, if it is just one day or two days that you get too tired to go to work, it may not necessarily mean that this is time for something different. But you know, when you see that this is consistently happening, then it is definitely time. And the other thing that is good to do is to really um, to consult with your personal board of directors or your you know support system, whether they are your colleagues, your mentors, your sponsors, and obviously your coach as well. And those are the people who can really brainstorm with you on you know really helping you to think through what's next for you 
Yeah, we're about out of time, but I do want to offer our viewers an opportunity to get connected to you. So uh, tell them how they can get connected both to your services and then also to your book. Yeah, just um, I would say I'm on LinkedIn, so you can find me on LinkedIn. At the same time, you can also go to Tenshi.com and we have a contact us button and just submit a form that way. All right. Maggie, we want to thank you so much for being with us and uh, sharing a little bit about the experience. And hopefully uh, you've really encouraged somebody today to really take a look at their career and to also make some positive choices. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Darren. It's so much fun. Great. We've got to have you back. All right. Well, Maggie is our guest here, and we want you to continue watching. The Social Justice Forums is going to take a break, and when we return, we'll be back with another exciting guest. <laughs>